Okay, we'll come back. In the last example, I explained a new concept, which the <coughs> excuse me, velocity of the object can be found uh, at some time, and to find out how we can find out. So in this video, I'll be talking about the polar polar coordinates of the uh, velocities, and then uh, finding out the projectile motion, the uh, the motion of an object in projectile motion. Uh, using those polar coordinates. So polar coordinates is actually uh, already, um, sometimes you will, may have already know by now, the coordinates in which we express as in the IJ format, IJ, IJK format. So this is actually two dimensional motion, so K will be zero, the, the velocity of the object in the Z direction, or the Z direction will be zero. So I will take only the I direction and the J direction. So uh, I direction is the direction in which we normally take x axis and j direction is the uh, direction in which we normally take as the y axis. So, uh, for example, if you are given a sum like this, right, uh, an object moves in a path followed by the function uh, 4i plus 6j, the function 4i plus 6j. So, the question is asking what is the maximum height? achieved by the object. And the second question is, what is the total time taken by the object? Third question, what is the velocity of the object at t equals 5 seconds? And the last question is, what is the range of the object? So, this is a simple question. This is the same, this is a similar question to what I discussed in the last video. Uh, and uh, the only difference is that these are using not, not the velocity, not the normal velocity that we see in the projectile motion, these are using the polar coordinates. So, to understand polar coordinates, I will divide this sum into the horizontal and vertical velocities and uh, take the solution. All right, I will take this sum. Take a line like this. So, and this is the positive x direction, which is called i. And Right? So this is J. So this is velocity 4i plus 6j. So this is velocity, so I will mark this one 4i plus 6j. So the velocity in this direction, now, now this is actually I am taking a velocity, not the displacement. This is the velocity. This is velocity, this is velocity. So this is a velocity versus velocity graph. I have uh, decomposed the velocity into two axes. So this will be the j j axis or the y axis we are normally taking. This will be the i axis, right? So this will be the y axis j we are normally taking, and this will be the i axis or the x axis we are normally taking. So this is also velocity. So I'll take the uh, velocity of the object like this, and I'll call this angle theta. They are not given theta, but you don't need to find theta because they have directly given in the question the velocities in this direction. So if this is 4i plus 6j, the velocity in this direction should be 4. In this direction should be 6. As simple as that. So <coughs> 4i, excuse me, 4i is that it's in this direction, in the x direction, normal x direction, it has velocity of 4, and in the y direction, it has a velocity of 6. So, the vertical velocity of the object at the initial question is 6 meters per second, upward direction, and the uh, horizontal uh, direction, or the horizontal velocity of the object is 4 meters per second, and that is also positive in the uh, pointing towards the right. Alright, so this is how. So, they need to, first of all, they need to find the maximum height to achieve, so I will take the parabolic path uh, followed by the object. So, uh, if the object is uh, starting from me, this is the origin. I take it as O, and if the object is landing, I put it like this, and A, landing at point A, and the time taken here, time t equals 0 here, and time t equals t here, you don't know the time t, you have to find that, and the maximum height is at B, and the maximum height is at H, the maximum height is H, right? So you need to first of all find, uh, and I will take the range as R, so this is R, the distance between O and A, right? 
this r, the distance between O and A, this r. So I need to find h and r. So to, need, uh, to find h, now I know the uh, velocity in the vertical direction. Uh, so I do, but, but I don't know the time t. I don't know the time t between uh, the object takes from O to B, from O to A. So as I mentioned in the last videos, the time taken from O to B or the time taken from the initial position to the maximum height is half the time taken by the object uh, to move from O to A or from the initial position to the final position if the, uh, if the object travels uh, the initial position coincides with the initial height of the object it coincides with the final height so in this example I know, don't know the time t so t is out of question so the only equation that eliminates t and find h is v squared plus u squared v squared, v squared equals u squared plus 2 times a times x so I will put that from O to B to find H. Alright. From O to B, O to B, B squared equals U squared plus 2A is in this direction. So the final velocity at this point is 0. Final velocity at B is 0. 0. So V here is 0. Initial velocity in the y direction or the initial velocity of the object in the uh, vertical direction is 6. You don't need to decompose according to the angle now. They have already given 6 square. Uh, so the acceleration, I, I am taking the positive direction as the upper direction. So the acceler gravitational acceleration will be minus in that direction. So g will be minus. So uh, 2 times g is minus g times h is minus 2 g h which is minus 2 times I will take g as 10 and the maximum height is h so I will take this 20 times h this in uh, to this side so this is 20 h so 6 squared is 36 so h is equal to 36 by 20 so 36 by 20 is 4 times 9 4 times 5 9 by 5 so that is equal to 1.8 million So the maximum height achieved by the object is 1.8 meters. So the next question is the total time taken. All right. So the total time taken, I will simply take this is, uh, the object's motion from zero uh, O to A, O to A, so that the vertical displacement of the object will be zero. I will put S equals U D plus R B D squared because the vertical height is zero. So I can directly find H from zero to A. S equals U T plus half A T square. So the uh, vertical height of the object from 0 to A, from 0 to A is 0. Initial velocity of the object in the upper direction is 6. And I will take the time as T. So 6 times T plus half times the gravitational gravity, gravity is acting downwards. So I am taking the positive direction upper, so the gravity is minus, so minus g. So half times minus g times t squared is minus half, minus half times g times t squared. So this is minus half times g is 10 t squared. So half times 10 is 5, this is 5 t squared, I will take the, into this side. 5 t squared equals 60 to t cannot be 0 because we are taking the total time taken. t equals 0 is the initial position, so we can divide by t. So 5 t equals 6, so t is equal to 1.2 seconds. So t equals 1.2 seconds. So that's the second question. The third question is velocity at time t equals uh, t equals 1. Right? Velocity of the object at t equals 1. So the velocity of the object at t equals 1.2 uh, the to sorry the total time taken by the object uh, to travel is 1.2 seconds so in the last video we had to find so I, as i explained in the last video we had to find uh, the total time the, the, sorry the time taken by the object to reach the maximum height because we don't know whether the object is between the initial position or uh, the maximum height or at the maximum height or between the maximum height and the final position so the velocity, the direction of the velocity changes. So if the velocity is t equals 1.2 seconds here, 
equals 1.2 seconds right equals 1.2 seconds so that's the the, so the time is 1.2 seconds so that's the time taken by the object to cover the whole distance from 0 to A so that's the final time so the total time is 1.2 uh, seconds so the time from 0 to B or B to A that's the time between the initial position to maximum height or the maximum height to the final position is half of that which is 0 0.6 seconds so t equals 0 0.6 seconds here you don't need to find that actually you can take it from the general assumption t equals 0 0.6 seconds so uh, the time taken by the object to read the maximum height is 0 0.6 seconds time taken by the object to read the final position is 3 equals 1.2 seconds so they are asking the velocity at t equals 1 second so in the last example the object will be between b and a or between the maximum height and the final position so it will be somewhere here take a general I'll take a general point still the velocity of the object the horizontal velocity will be 4 because the horizontal velocity is unaffected by gravity but we are to find the vertical velocity of the object so when the object is between the maximum height and the final position the vertical velocity of the object will be in the downward direction so I'll take it as v and the resultant of these velocities as vm so that's simple so to find v uh, we don't know the height at uh, that point so this is t equals 1 second t equals 1 seconds right 1 second so we don't know the height at t equals 1 second so we have to eliminate h so to eliminate h uh, we have to eliminate 3 uh, equations of motion so we only are left with one equation of motion which is uh, v equals u plus a t in which h has no role so to find v, we put v equals u plus uh, uh, v equals u plus a t between I will take this point as d or c, c I will take this point as c between b and c b and c this motion right that direction this the color so taking the motion from b to c right motion from b to c I can say I can put v equals u plus a t now I know that the uh, gravity is in the downward direction the velocity is in the downward direction and the initial velocity is zero so nothing is in the upward direction so I will directly put v equals u plus a t in the downward direction so the final velocity of the object is v here initial velocity is zero so I have put zero so v equals a t if u is equal to zero so a is equal to g and I will take in g as positive in the uh, g is positive in the downward direction so g is equal to 10 times the time t the time t the time t is actually the time between uh, b and c the time at b is 0 0.5 seconds and time at c is t, uh, uh, 1 second sorry 0 0.6 seconds at time uh, at b and the time at b and the question we are asking is 1 second so the time taken between b and c is 0 0.4 seconds so this is 0 0.4 seconds so v equals 4 4 meters per second so at this position the velocity of the object the horizontal velocity of the object will be equal to the vertical velocity of the object so we need to find not v we need to find velocity the resultant velocity we are asking the, what is the velocity of the object at time t equals uh, 1 second so we have to find vr so we know the velocity in the horizontal direction is 4 Vertical direction is well, also 4 this is meters per second. Right? Vertical direction is also 4, we need to find Vr. So Vr is this. So Vr is equal to 4 square plus 4 square root of 4. So 4 square is 16, 4 square is 16, 16 plus 16 is 32, that is 2 times 16, so the root of that is 4 root 2. So the velocity of the object, so the velocity of the object at one second is 4 root 2. So the last question is what is the range of the object? To find the range, we can put r equals v times sine 2 d by g, this kind of 
are equal to v sin v square sin 2 2 d raised on g, but we don't know what is theta. So we can find it actually. We can find it here. Here we can find theta, right? But we don't need actually the value of theta. Uh, I will put AC equals u d plus half d square because we know the horizontal component of the uh, velocity. They have already given as four. So from uh, zero to a, I will put zero to a. I will put AC equals u d plus half d square in the right direction, the horizontal direction. AC equals u d plus half d square. So the range is r. I have taken r. So the velocity uh, of the object in the horizontal direction is 4 and the time taken by the object to move from uh, O to A or 0 to A is uh, we have found 1.2 seconds. seconds and the acceleration is 0 because the acceleration is acting directly downwards and the velocity is horizontal. So the velocity is horizontal, the acceleration is downwards so the object doesn't we doesn't have any acceleration so half a d squared will be zero so r equals four times one point two seconds so four point eight minutes. So the range of the object will be four point eight meters. So this is also an ordinary sum in this in this video I explained. And the only difference between this sum and the other sums is that we have been given the polar coordinates of the velocity and then we have to find some of the quantities that they have asked. So in this video, I explained the polar coordinates. So in the next videos, I will be explaining some of the variations uh, that we see in projectile motion. See you later.